Cyclone Freddy moving on to Madagascar and is still a powerful major cyclone on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for February 21st. Cyclone Freddy, still the main attraction to tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. Still a severe cyclone that's headed towards Madagascar and will make landfall there within the next 24 hours. We've had eight storms so far this year and we are still code red for this major cyclone situation right now. It's 100 days until Atlantic hurricane season begins. Well, that's come by quickly, hasn't it? But right now it's still looking very quiet with a long frontal system extending across large parts of the United States and off the East Coast. In the main areas of the tropics then, we've still got that system off the coast of the Philippines that you can see there, but chances have been dropped to nil from our analyst team. But further towards the west, take a look at the Indian Ocean where we now have a 60% chance. It's been gradually going up throughout the last uh, few days there. For an area of interest, it's going to be following almost in Freddy's footsteps, but will safely pass towards the south and east, well to the east of the Masarina Islands. Freddy then has cleared Mauritius and La Réunion just about and is now headed towards Madagascar. It's in not as good shape as it was earlier as you'll see on satellite shortly but it is still a strong category 3 storm just shy of category 4 status and is drawing nearer and nearer to Madagascar which is certainly uh, not wanting to see much rainfall from this storm after what we saw from Chiniso earlier in the year. Here is the satellite imagery showing any red zones on the screen, large areas of concentrated rainfall amounts. Looking at Freddy there, you can't see any red. So that is interesting. Usually you do see that in mature tropical cyclones, but Freddy, not so, because uh, it isn't a particularly wet storm, and that certainly goes in our favor. Certainly for the Masserine Islands, they probably didn't get a large amount of rain at all there. And you can see how it's gone in the last few hours, moving gradually away from La Réunion in the last few hours there. Uh, the big dome region, around the center of the storm hasn't affected the islands and so the strongest winds have remained well offshore. Mauritius and Reunion probably only just getting to tropical storm force sustained winds and you can see that the eye has deteriorated quite a lot on that satellite imagery loop, this one a 12 hour loop and but you can see its movement there as well gradually west south westwards. It's been very steady actually on that trajectory and is going to continue there towards the Madagascar landfall near Mahanjari. Uh, the eye might still come back uh, towards that landfall area but it is starting to run out of time computer models have been suggestive uh, that this system could rebound and reach a secondary peak just before it makes landfall whether that happens or not is still uh, an open question but keep watching closely to see if that eye might come back stronger Sea surface temperatures around the world look like this. This is what the Eastern Pacific currently looks like. Temperatures up around uh, 79 degrees Fahrenheit generally, a little bit higher in some areas. That's 26 degrees Celsius, pushing, pushing 28 near Mexico. And off the coast of uh, in the Atlantic, the Caribbean, still looking fairly warm there as well, but it doesn't mean very much just yet. The North Indian Ocean, Arabian Sea, temperatures looking good there, 26 to 27. And take a look at the Indian Ocean, very warm temperatures in the southwest region especially in the Mozambique Channel which certainly means that Freddy will not be done after Madagascar landfall and will have ample time for intensification over 29 degrees Celsius waters which are also prevalent near the coast of Australia Bay of Bengal 27 plus and there you can see the northern side of Australia as well temperatures very warm there 28 to 29 degrees Celsius which might become important later on and in the Coral Sea, also looking fairly warm there too. And around Fiji, getting up towards 29 degrees Celsius there as well. Western Pacific, still warm in the lower latitudes towards the deep tropics. 28 degrees plus in some areas, extending up to Guam and 26 as far north as Luzon. And then in the South China Sea there, decent temperatures in the southern reaches. Sea surface temperature anomalies look like this and you can see it's quite mixed across the Indian Ocean. 
Western Pacific a little bit above average, the South Pacific very much above average in the, in the subtropics particularly. Uh, still cooler than normal waters hanging on in the Central Pacific, but take a look east over there towards the Galapagos Islands, well above average, and that could be signs of an incoming El Nino. Keep watching that one closely. Oceanic heat content is looking good in the South Pacific, as you can see, mainly north of Fiji and Vanuatu, but anywhere in the turquoise onwards really is good enough to help out a tropical cyclone in its strengthening. And near Guam, still that area of orange, but it is simmering away at the moment, so that is starting to drop back a little bit, although the Western Pacific is still pretty well placed coming into this year for oceanic heat content and energy. GFS model takes uh, Cyclone Freddy into Madagascar quite cleanly there, uh, probably still as a Category 3, and there it is on the other side, getting close to hurricane strength before it strikes Mozambique and then turns towards the southwest a little bit. There is a growing school of thought among some of the models that this storm could actually curve back out to sea from Mozambique and down towards the southeast. Can't be ruled out completely, and there's that other system off to the right hand side that stays away. Precipitation expectations then across the region too. Madagascar taking a look there, uh, a line, a slither really of significant rain amounts getting up and above six inches in that zone. That's 150 millimeters. But take a look towards the southeastern part of Africa itself. Some very large amounts of rainfall possible there in southern Mozambique some parts of Zimbabwe but it's actually shifted southwards towards South Africa and Eswatini where we could see some significant amounts of rainfall there increasing to above 300 millimeters and also some similar amounts along the coast. Even down in the Maputo area we could be looking at possibly some areas getting up to six inches of rainfall at 150 millimeters. Still a low confidence forecast and this could change and most of that rainfall inland would be from its remnants and not the cyclone at its mature phase. In the longer range there's that other system moving down towards the south initially and it stalls for quite a bit and it just dies off actually but eventually it gets swallowed up by that front that just sweeps by there around about the first second of March and there it goes completing its movement towards the southeast so it doesn't affect any land areas but it looks like that will become a nameable storm. That's the 60% system that we are currently tracking in the central Indian Ocean. Moving on to the Australian region and things are looking pretty interesting according to the GFS over the next five to ten days, the medium range. Three different tropical cyclones now being formed on that forecast although this is the first time we've seen that on the GFS return so I wouldn't put much faith in it though that western system looks like it's going to get really strong on that model run becomes a significant tropical cyclone getting to at least category 3 status then those two in the middle I would say the western one and the eastern one is the most likely the middle one not so much that's the serious stuff done with. You can take a look at the Force 13 merch store by taking a look at, uh, by scanning the barcode, I should say, at the top right there, and taking a look at all of our products, including our Still Waiting for Hone t shirt, as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. In the long range then, the Silly Range is what we call it, looking towards the Western Pacific, there are two areas that start to swirl around, there's one off the coast of the Philippines becoming a significant storm there, moving through the Visayas region and Mindanao, and in the Indian Ocean, another tropical cyclone forming over there in the Bay of Bengal, and probably getting to hurricane equivalent status there in the first days of March. Now, we've seen this signal a few times from the GFS, but it is still very long range, so I'll just say keep watching, and there's no real confidence of any of this happening just yet. Same too, really, for some of these Australian systems, and eventually, what becomes of them all? Well, they all end up moving on towards the south. The one in the middle makes landfall in Queensland, the other one dissipates off to the right hand side, and the latter becomes an extra tropical cyclone as it passes just to the southwest of Perth and on towards the uh, south of Australia and down towards the uh, higher latitudes. Watch it again there as it uh, skids past Perth. Extremely long range out, a long way out though, so I wouldn't put much faith into this outcome. 
You can talk about it though on our Discord server. We're there all the time and we have lots of people and lots of topics. Our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 to join the tropical weather and world weather chat around the world. Well, what happened on this day? It was February 21st, 2013, when we had Cyclone Haruna, a Category 3 which was peaking and had a decent appearance to the west of Madagascar. It would pass to the south, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember whether it made landfall there or not. But it was reaching its peak intensity on this day at sea. We also had Tropical Storm Shan Shan, which briefly developed as it moved away towards the west of Palawan and moved out over the South China Sea. Fascinating, two storms that were active on both sides of the equator. Well, that's not what we're seeing today. We're seeing one strong storm on one side of the equator, Freddy. But in the Atlantic, when we get to that hurricane season, the first name on the list is Arlene, Eastern Pacific, Adrian, and in the Central Pacific. Maybe one day before I'm grey and old, I might get to see Hone. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Sanvu, and in the North Indian Ocean, if that model run uh, bears true, we might see Mocha. Eight storms so far around the world, although it feels with Freddy that like we've had quite a few more than that, but trust me, it is still eight. Next in the Australian region is Herman, Southwest Indian Ocean, Inala, and in the South Pacific, it's Judy. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.